Hello, everybody, and welcome back to my channel, Victoria and Nicola. And today I have another wonderful guest for you, uh, Kenzie Nevins, a Y historical fantasy writer. We've already had her on the channel. Welcome, Kenzie. Thanks. <laughs> and uh, today we're going to switch it up a little bit and talk a little more about social media for writers um rather than i mean we probably will hit the conversation of writing as well at some point but um uh we're just going to talk a little bit about social media various platforms and i think kenzie is the gal and writer to talk to us about that because <laughs> take it away <laughs> um okay so i feel like originally i was not i actually didn't even have any social media like myself until like late high school or college. But in college, I discovered that it was something I really liked. So when I was trying to figure out like what was the thing I could do while trying to, you know, get an agent or become a writer, what was the thing I could do to make money that I would enjoy at the same time? Social media sort of became that thing. So um, <clears throat> I started my author Instagram in April 2019 and it really like took off from there and now I co-own a company where I do social media branding for writers I've taught at a lot of conferences about social media for authors and I my full-time job is I work for a business coaching company doing social media and copywriting so wow um I mean that's definitely something something it makes you something of an expert to that sort of thing that you're now legitimately having this company and all the experience plus if you guys haven't yet you should check out Kenzie's um Instagram page and her feed is just gorgeous the way you you, you know the way you design every post and then the synergy between every post and the kind of the aesthetic is really beautiful so yeah. I feel like that's something I really want to aside from the actual technicalities of like mm -hmm. which platform is better for writers all that I would love to kind of pick your brain a little bit on how you how much time it takes to cultivate that sort of looking feed and how how long like where do you get your inspiration from and that sort of thing Okay, yeah. So my Instagram is Kenzie Melody Author, and it's the same on TikTok, I think, and Facebook. But Instagram is like my favorite one. So mm -hmm. that's the one that's like the most curated. Um, I feel like it took me a while to figure out what I wanted to do, but I think you, an author, can come at their branding from a lot of different ways. I came at it from a color standpoint. So, like, I knew I wanted it to be purple. Um, and it took me a long, cause that's my favorite color. And just that ties into a lot of the stuff that I do Like my website is purple and everything. Um, and I, so I really think when you're creating an author brand, especially before you have books published, which like, I don't have any books published at the moment. I'm still querying. And a lot of people are like, how do you like create a brand as an author before you, you know, people want to start once they have the book out, but you actually need to start before because you know, publishers and agents want to see that there is an audience who would want to read your book. And if you're going to get people excited about your book, you got to start before, you know, the book is out. So I chose, so normally I think the important thing is to tie in different areas of your life that are important to you, that are part of your voice, because then you'll collect a audience or like community of people who like those same things and those would probably be the type of people who'd want to read your books so the things that I brought in um are like tea and gardening which are really big things to me and a little bit of my like large theater and musical knowledge um reading books I love to read so talking about the books I've read and the authors that I like and read, recommending books is a big part of my presence so I sort of decided on all those things ahead of time. And the purple color scheme sort of seems to touch on all of those for me because I love gardening and lavender is my favorite plant. So I was, I knew ahead of time that I wanted to sort of pull all those things in. And originally I started with like way back early on my Instagram, I started with a photo filter that was purple. Like the, the filter itself was tinted purple. And that like worked for me for a while, but I slowly, I started to want my photos to be like a little bit of a better quality. 
And that was just looking a little bit, not the way that I wanted it to look. So now I've moved into, I, the props that I use always have like purple involved. So it, and it changes a little depending on the season. So like in the fall or the winter, it's like more dark and orangey. And then in the spring and the summer, it's more like purple and pinkish. So right now I've been using this scarf that's like purple floral that's in like every single photo. And that's sort of like a small thing that I use to tie all the photos together. Another small thing that I use is I have this cup of dried lavender buds that I dried out of my garden over the past few years. And those are in every single photo in the spring and summer theme. So I use those like small props that are always the same to sort of tie every photo together. And that's what really makes them all look the same. And it took me a while to figure out what I wanted the layout and aesthetic of my photos to be. I tried a lot of different things before I landed on the one that I use now, which is not too, I do mostly flat lays with like books laid on my desk. And it's generally, it's like not too busy, but they're not too minimalist either. They're kind of in between. You know, a lot of people on Bookstagram have one or the other. And I just kind of found this spot in between that works for me. So that's kind of how I get them all to look the same. And then they do all have a filter on them. So in the past, I have sort of made my own filters, but I don't actually know anything about photography. <laughs> um, and so at this point, I'm using a filter that I purchased from another Instagrammer who sells her filters on Etsy. And so that's like a great thing that you can do. I use Adobe Lightroom is the app that I use to edit my photos. And so if you buy a filter from someone else, you can just sort of load it into your Lightroom and then it'll just be right there for you to use. So I do also tell people using the same filter on every photo helps the photos to like all look continuous and the same. Um, I do just take the photos with my iPhone. So it's not like I have like really fancy equipment or anything. Some people have real cameras. I just have ring light in my iPhone. And I, I want to be a person who batches the photos and takes like a bunch at once. And just like on the day of posting, I don't have to like take a bunch of time to take the photo, but I just don't love it. I don't, I love how the photos look at the end, but I don't love setting up the flat lays and like taking all the different photos. So if I, I've found that if I try to batch them, I get tired after like six photos <laughs> and then I just have like a week or two of content rather than some Instagrammers do like a month or two months at one time. Yeah. So at this point, mostly what I do is on the day that I post, which is every other day, I have to set up the photo that morning. So I'm trying to find a balance between the two, but right now that's what I do. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think that was always my problem. And, and for anybody who doesn't know, which probably most people don't know, I had a completely different company where I uh, sold, I manufactured and sold a sleep formula because in my personal life, I'm an acupuncturist and I teamed up mm -hmm. with nutritionists and we had this business for a while. And so I had to learn a lot about social media for that mm -hmm. particular business. And it's the only business that I've ever been actually very meticulous about social media. I really lack on it in mm -hmm. my, like any other sphere. Right. Um, but that's, that's something that's very hard to do to strike that balance of like posting and making it authentic in terms of like right. when you take it and then finding that balance of like not overwhelming yourself because then it's not sustainable at all. Right. Yeah, exactly. That's what I always, I mean, I think going into it, it looks really overwhelming. And to me, it did too. And I always tell people part of what I do with my company at the right stage is help people see that like, it's not that overwhelming. There's just these like simple steps that you can take. Cause I truly believe that any right, any writer and any person can do it. It's just kind of like one simple step at a time rather than trying to do everything all at once. It's just sort of like one step at a time. And eventually you get to a place where you're happy with it. I, like I said, my feed has gone through a lot of iterations and I feel like right now after three years, I guess I've, finally reached the place where I'm like okay this is what I want like three years ago when I started this is what I was looking for and I've like just now reached it because I was just sort of taking little steps at a time trying to figure out what I wanted it to be and trial and error and that kind of thing well and you know in your feed I don't think because I remember looking at your feed like probably over a year ago and it was great then too you just probably know what specific aesthetic you were going for and right. that probably it's like your own standard and goal because it right. looked great even back then. Thank um, you. um, 
Okay, so do you use any platforms, other platforms to help you post? I know that there's, you mentioned Adobe um, and you mentioned the filter, but some people use like a scheduler to post right. and some people use like Canva to cultivate. I mean, instead, I, that would probably be instead of Adobe. Um, but everybody, you know, everybody's different. And I've also had, I just found out there's a, there's a app where you can upload a ton of content and it cycles through. Oh, that's and, interesting. And so like, if you put a hundred posts in there and it's, it, you know, by the time it reaches the 99th and reposts the, the first one again, because it's been so long ago, like you basically, it's a lot more hands-off and it's like easier. You do a ton of work right. at the beginning and then you just kind of stand back. Right. But I don't know if that would work for you because you cultivate, you speak about a book in depth. Right. Right. Yeah. And I, so for my day job where I'm a social media manager, that company does use HubSpot as the scheduling app. So I schedule all the posts in there at the beginning of the month. And then they just sort of go out like when they go out every evening or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then I'm on the apps to be able to like engage with people and respond to comments and that kind of stuff. But I just schedule them all at once at the beginning of the month and then just sort of let them go. And that works really well for that company because there's certain things they want to hit every month. So mm. like every month we have to pitch a YouTube video and every month we have to have this many pitches for like our event that's coming up. Mm. And so since all that stuff is, there's all this stuff I need to post that's figured out ahead of time, it's easier for me to just schedule them rather than trying to remember like, oh, I have to post today. Like what, what am I supposed to post this mm. month? For myself, I don't, I schedule them. I just post them the day of. And that's partly because sometimes I just really get inspired with a caption. Um, other times it can, I easily get burnt out with captions. So I feel like if I tried to write a bunch of them at once for my personal page, because I usually do longer captions, mm -hmm. I'd get burnt out really easily and just sort of annoyed with it. And so it's easier for me to write them like in the moment when I'm inspired. Um, I do, I think, so I use Adobe for photo editing, which I think it's great at. Canva is definitely the best if you're going to do like an, a text post or like anything that's not just an actual photo. Mm -hmm. Canva is amazing for so like anything with words, like it's a really sophisticated, uh, but easy to use graphic design program. So people who have, like, I don't do text type posts, but other people who do stuff like you know, six ways to grow your Instagram engagement or whatever. Canva is like amazing for making those kind of posts because it's really easy and user-friendly. Um, and I do do some of that with the company that I work for. Recently, I heard, and I am not totally sure if this is true or not because this is the first time I'd ever heard it, but I obviously do a lot of research on social media for work and like trying to keep up with what's going on in the industry. Recently, I heard that Instagram penalizes posts that are posted within and uh, another scheduling app rather than being posted in Instagram. So another you get hurdle. Less, uh, what? Another and, hurdle. <laughs> right. So you get less engagement. Now, Facebook does have kind of its own scheduling platform and like Facebook owns Instagram. So you can, I think that one is the only, is like they're fine with using that one because it's their own. So Facebook creator or creator studio or something is what it's called and you can just schedule your facebook and instagram posts in there so if people are going to schedule i would probably unless you already have something you use and it works for you like the company that i work for does it seems to work for them um i would probably suggest it is probably just easiest to do it in facebook itself because they also don't charge you and other programs you know mm -hmm. to get to like different levels and whatever you have to pay Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I do it on at least my own page. I do it all myself. And I think if I had a lot of pages to manage, that would be too much. Even now, just my own page and the page for my business is a little bit much for me. Um, but I do really want to cultivate like a personal community. Um, you really get higher engagement the more that you engage with people and talk with them and like respond to comments and comment on other people's posts and respond to people's stories and all that kind of stuff. And I have noticed in my own account that that has grown my engagement a lot, probably more than anything else. So I really 
it's important to me to like be in there personally and like be talking to people and get to know people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what, I mean, engagement is in a way that's king. So social media is king, but engagement yeah. is king or it's like the emperor. Right, <laughs> right, exactly. Um, what, so I do notice the diff. Uh, do you find that when you post a really long, like kind of wordy, personalized post underneath, that's a lot, that's what generates the engagement. Like people tend to, um, I guess, be attracted to that more so than if it's like short and snippy a little bit. It depends. I have found that I get the best engagement from like first of all, random questions, which those are usually my shorter posts. That's usually what I go for if I like don't have a lot of time or I'm trying to get somewhere or it's early in the morning or whatever, is I'll just ask some random question. Sometimes it's like a deeper writing question about your villain or your hero. And sometimes it's just like, what is your favorite ice cream flavor? And people seem to be really, I tend to get engagement from those. And then I, the one I tend to get the most engagement from are posts that are the most personal. Mm -hmm. So recently I posted, if I post anything that's about myself and my own life or like stuff that I'm struggling with, I tend to get a, by far the most engagement on posts like that, which I think is really a testament to the fact that people want to know you. And it used to kind of be like, I remember when I was a kid, I didn't, it didn't even occur to me that the authors who wrote the books that I loved were real people. <laughs> you know, like it was just kind of like a name on the cover like yeah, that yeah, didn't yeah, connect yeah. to like a real person to me. Yeah. And, but nowadays, like people want to know you. If they're going to buy your book, they want it to be because they know you and like you mm -hmm. because of just that social media culture. Mm -hmm. I think that's sort of what we've created. So how, what was my question? My question was, as you're speaking, uh, do you find that when you do share a personal struggle, struggle is it the people that are engaging are, are there a lot of new people because of the hashtags that you used or are there just people that you've already acquired along the way through your engagement? Yeah, so I, there are like a few people who I'll get comments from almost every single time on every post. So mm -hmm. the people that like engage with me the most and I engage with them the most because the more you engage the person's account, the more you'll see their posts. Whereas like I have a little over 1500 followers and a lot of them, I know a large portion of them never see my posts because that's just the way the algorithm works. You see the people that you engage with the most. Mm -hmm. So there's a small group of people who I'll hear from almost every time. And then when I have one of those high engagement posts, there will be other people that I'll hear from too. And a lot of, most of the time, it's people who already follow me, but especially if I'm posting reels, it will a lot of times be people who don't follow me because reels like Instagram just pushes them harder than anything else. Mm -hmm. That's actually the, my, one of my questions that I really want to talk about, like the variety in Instagram of like the stories, the reels, the, uh, the, the, the static posts. I don't even know what those are called. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what I, I do, I have heard many times that reels or in lives, there's also lives mm -hmm. um, that Instagram is really, really pushing lives and reels. And, um, and I remember I was talking to a social media manager, maybe just a few months ago, maybe a couple of months ago. And she was saying how you have to, in order to really get noticed by the algorithm or to be, you know, for your, your um, mm -hmm. stuff to be kind of noticed by other people, you have to do something. She said something ridiculous, like three lives a week and like, and, and like three reels a day, or I don't remember what it was, but it was a lot. And I remember thinking, okay, that's like a full-time job <laughs> that, right. I, that like what, that uh, off, most often people just don't have that sort of time. So what have you, like, have you kind of figured out like a nice little uh, formula for yourself or for, I don't know, maybe this is picking your brain too much, but like what is like a balance between, yeah. you know, letting it engulf your entire life and still yes. noticed? I totally agree because I had that same question and it's the same with TikTok because TikTok is a new one that I'm on, but you'll hear these people say like, oh, like you'll get your engagement will grow so fast if you post like seven TikToks a day. Well, seven TikToks a day is like a TikTok an hour. No one <laughs> has time to do that. 
like I don't know who these people are who have time to post they're teenagers that don't have a job that's who they are (laughs) right so I I have found that consistency is the best so yes your engagement will probably grow faster if you're doing like three lives a week and like a reel a day or whatever but that's just not doable for most people and so I found that Yes, it will grow a little bit slower if you're just consistent, but I think consistency is the best. So the way that I do it is I post, I post every other day. And then the days that I don't post, I do reels, except I don't do reels on the weekends, but I do still post on the weekends. Mm -hmm. So since I post every other day, I'll have like one static post will go out on the weekend, but I take a break from reels because they're just not as fun to me. I don't enjoy the everything's going toward a video medium like Instagram is if you scroll through your Instagram feed now you'll see so many more videos um Instagram is even has been trying going with a different photo size that like looks more like a video that might be like rolling out for people soon um that I've heard about because they everyone's just like video is everything now but I just don't find it as fun or as aesthetic or whatever or interesting so that's why I take a break from them on the weekend, but I've found that that schedule, it works pretty well for me. It's a pretty good balance. I'm never doing both a reel and a post on the same day. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'm posting something every day, whether like a post or a reel. And then in between those, I'm just kind of doing stories all the time. Like every, anytime I'm like eating something fun or, you know, my outfits or whatever. And that seems to work. The like I said, the growth is slower, but it's there. And your stories are not always tailored to writing. You said it's like something right. fun that you're doing. Yeah. See yeah, that? my stories are more like peeks into my everyday life. So stories you probably you normally should post several of them a day, except every once in a while you should give it a break and like let your stories run out because you know they expire every 24 hours. So you get more engagement if every once in a while you like let them run out and then you have a whole day with like no stories and then you go back to it like three or four stories a day that just helps boost it a little bit but yeah so that'll just be like my outfit or the food I just ate for dinner or this thing that I'm growing in my garden you know because I can just do like a quick little snack Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's a really good reminder that not everything has to be hyper focused on writing um right what what about TikTok now that we entered that conversation yeah um I don't know have you obviously TikTok is like the new kid on the block and um I hear often that it's a lot easier to get noticed on TikTok and grow your followers rather than Instagram which is kind of like the grandpa now at this point um have you found that to be true Yeah. So I held back from getting on TikTok for a really long time because I was like, I'm too old for that. Like I'm 26, but it just felt like I was past the age range that, you know, people are on TikTok, but that's actually not true. There's all generations on TikTok now. It just started. My mom, a Russian singer, watches TikTok. She's like, I have this recipe on TikTok. (laughs) Okay. What? What? Yeah. So all age ranges are on there now, but it started with younger kids and so I think I was like I'm too old for that I don't want to do that like I said I don't love video content it just seems like such a big thing I'd spent three years learning Instagram and now I was like I don't want to be really have to become really good at a different social media I've never even looked at before yeah right but I started my TikTok in like February of this year maybe and the reason I started it is because honestly the truth is Instagram is trying to become an e-commerce app not a social media app and everyone kind of knows that. Yeah, I can see in, that. There's like, a ton of constant ads there. Yeah, in the social media world, they're pushing, you know, big businesses, people who are selling things at the expense of small creators. And so while I still think it's a good place, it's an important place for authors to be because the bookstagram community is big and it's really supportive. And also there are a lot of reviewers on there. Gaining followers is really hard. Like I said, I've been on there for three years and I'm doing all the stuff you're supposed supposed to do and I only have like 1500 followers and there are people who've been on there longer than me who have like 10,000 but that's because earlier in time it was so much easier to gain followers really quickly on Instagram and now it's just not everybody's engagement is going down they're not pushing people's content you know 
my views are like a fraction of what they were like two years ago. <clears throat> Sorry, I had allergies. No. And so because of that, I was like, well, if there's a chance that TikTok will work better, at some point it's going to become Instagram. So I have to get on there while people are still gaining followers like crazy because there's basically no mm. algorithm rules. Yeah. Which is the way that it is now, the way that Instagram used to be. So it is true. I mean, I've been on there since February and I have like 300 followers now and I gain like a couple per day, basically. Some days I gain like 10 and some days I gain like one or two, but I almost never gain none. Um, and I post a TikTok every day and my TikToks I do batch just because I don't like making them. So like once I'm sitting down in front of the bookshelf and my ring light is up, I'm just going to do a ton of them since they're really short. And then they're just in my drafts and I just post one every morning. <clears throat> and also I have brought some of my reels over to use as TikToks because you can kind of use them interchangeably. And that's just kind of what I do. I followed a bunch of other book talkers. I saw what they were doing and you can use people's sounds. So if people use a song that's really popular or even just like a spoken sound that's really popular. I'll just save those. And then when I'm batching my TikToks, just go through and tape each one of them and then do them every morning. And yeah, the engagement is really high as far as like gaining followers. And as long as you're consistent on it, people are gaining followers much faster. And especially for indie authors, the book community on there is huge. I mean, it's, it's huge for everyone, but the self-published author community on TikTok is just giant and like very supportive of each other so yeah it I hate that it worked because I didn't want to be on TikTok but it is true and people who are posting more than one TikTok a day are gaining followers even faster than me I just one TikTok a day is what I can do so right so I, that was actually what you kind of answered my, one of my questions was like, can you reuse content? Because if you're spending time making a reel or yeah. a video for TikTok, can you just, you know, recycle it because it's a lot of work. Right. I tell people absolutely do. There are some types that you can't really, because for instance, on TikTok, it's very popular and normal for people to just be, you know, sitting down in front of their bookshelf talking about the book they just read. You don't usually do that on reels. They're usually a little bit more polished, like, you know, have music or whatever. Um, but those work on TikTok too. So not all content can go over. Once you've been on both apps for a while, you'll kind of see like what people do, mm -hmm. but most of it can. Mm -hmm. And I always tell people you should reuse content because there's no reason you should just be making all new content. You spent time on this stuff. <laughs> You should just exactly. reuse it. Yeah. And then the other question between between the hashtag in the hashtag world, because sometimes yeah. I think the hashtags are different. Sometimes they're the same. Um, I mean, what would you recommend as a resource what people could research? Is it just checking what other people, what other hashtags people are using? Or is there like an actual like, I don't even know the pop most like 10 most popular hashtags right such and such subject I wish there was <laughs> um at the watched. beginning what I did right at the beginning what I did was look at other people who posted the kind of stuff I wanted to post and was like what do what hashtags do these people use and that's sort of how I started but what you're actually supposed to do is search like on Instagram and on TikTok you can search by hashtag just like start typing something like hashtag writing or whatever and all of those hashtags will come up and you want to use a mix of large ones and small ones so when you search them on Instagram it'll tell you like hashtag writing community has this many billion posts in it and then and so those are really big hashtags that tons of people use and you want to use those because lots of people follow them who don't follow you so they'll right. see your posts but you also want to mix that in with smaller hashtags because in a huge hashtag you'll definitely get lost in the sea. But in a smaller hashtag, the people who follow that are probably a great audience for you and they're more likely to see your posts. So you definitely want to use a mix of. That's a very, posts. very good point because I never know uh, with hashtags which, which to go with. The ones that have like 2,000 or right. 200 rather than like 2 million <laughs> posts. Right. Something, you know? So 
yeah so just a mix and then just put them in a spreadsheet or whatever which when I do them for people for the right stage I do their hashtag research for them and I just put them in a spreadsheet I have the hashtags that I use and I note on my phone so I just copy and paste them every time and then I just switch a couple of them out so that they match the theme of that actual post because you don't want to do exactly the same hashtags every time but if they're mostly the same every time that's fine you can use up to 30 on Instagram some people will tell you not to use the whole 30. I've had good results using all 30. So I just used all 30. I copy and paste them on there every time. And then I just change out a couple and go with that. Wow, 30 hashtags. I mean, I think that that would make sense because then you're garnering a larger, like you're pulling, yeah. you know, more people. Exactly. So it seems like... Um, the more the better yeah the more the better um i mean i think i don't know is there anything else you want to add about hashtags i feel like that really covers a lot of my questions yeah i think people have different opinions about whether hashtags work or not i just kind of say why not i mean if there's any chance of more people seeing your post why not and then obviously on TikTok, you use less hashtags like i pretty much only ever use like another 12 because the TikTok um character count in the captions is super small right so I just usually put like a sentence in the caption and then the hashtags mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so actually now that you mentioned Twitter I feel, I love how organically this is moving like <laughs> from all the various oh, Twitter yeah. yes Twitter um now entering the Twitter sphere which I feel like is also big for writers because you know there's like mm -hmm. you know you're literally yeah. Your, yeah your tool is your words so right um, but I know Twitter isn't for everybody, just like Instagram isn't for everybody. Everybody has their, you know, uh, I don't know, pref preferred platform. So what have you, do you have like any <laughs> nuggets of wisdom about Twitter or um, yeah, how do you feel like, do you actually, do you think that the writing community is comparable on Twitter to TikTok or you still think it's TikTok is bigger? Um. They're both pretty big. I would say there's probably more, just like at the moment, there's probably more traditional published people on Twitter and more indie on TikTok, but I think that's like starting to switch. Mm -hmm. I So TikTok is the one that I started with when I was trying to grow my author presence because at that time there was no TikTok. And so everyone was like, Twitter is the one where you can grow really, really fast. And it definitely was at that point. I have no idea what it is now, but Twitter, it basically doesn't have an algorithm or if it does I'm not really sure what it is it's totally different than Instagram or Facebook or anything like that where the algorithm is kind of king mm -hmm. you just sort of see the tweets that there are in a way mm -hmm. but I so I was on Twitter for a good while probably like a year or two years where I posted like I tweeted all the time and I was like always engaging with other people's tweets and I just it got to a point where I couldn't do it anymore Twitter has a very different vibe than Instagram. And I think some people love it, but it's just, it's a lot more political, a lot more mean. I would say mean or harsh, just harsh. like the way that harsh people talk. Word. Harsh is a good word. The way that people talk on Twitter is just very harsh at other people. And that's just sort of like expected, like that's just sort of the culture of it. But recently a lot of authors have been getting off of Twitter because they've just been saying it's toxic and doesn't make them feel good but also other authors love it and for me it just it got to the point where it was pretty toxic and it was like affecting my mental health and so I was like no more of that so I still have the Twitter account but I don't really use it so my followers have been steadily falling but I have a like a little message in my bio that's like I mostly use Instagram so if you want to connect with me like find me over there mm -hmm. um so that's sort of my experience with Twitter. Some people do love it. And depending on what genre I do write, it can be really helpful. And I do, do still use it when I'm trying to find agents to query because all agents and publishers are on Twitter. That's like the biggest place yeah. for that genre of people. Mm -hmm. So we're like, and that's where like Twitter pitch parties happen. And a lot of people pitch their books yeah. during those. And so you can also find a lot of manuscript wish list tweets from agents and stuff on there. So I still use it for that, but... I don't really tweet anymore. Mm -hmm. And you know what recently has been <clears throat> kind of a bigger thing? I don't know if you noticed this on Twitter. Um, it's weird because even though uh, 
it's literally writing is the kind of tool that people are using on Twitter, but what are they called? Mood boards have been kind of big. So there's even mm-hmm. been like a pitch event with a mood board. And then yeah. I've noticed many, many. Um, so even if somebody's tweeting a pitch, they'll attach a mood board just yeah. to harness some of that feel feels that you sometimes yeah. can't get in the 280 characters of Twitter. Right. And but, I, but yeah, the visual I, element. yeah, yeah, the visual. Element. And I think that's interesting because I'm like, that's kind of what Instagram <laughs> is supposed to be. Yes. But people are like reeling in a little bit, harnessing a little bit of that uh, Instagram power of the visuals. Um, yes into the Twitter world, which I thought was kind of interesting. That's so interesting, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, so I, I do like Twitter. I do find it, I have had, like the people that I've met for, for example, a lot of these interviews that I do on the channel are through Twitter. So I'm very, right. I kind of harness it. I stay away from, um, negative subjects because yeah. I think it could be like you could get sucked in really easily whether I agree or disagree you know I just mm-hmm. stay away because I right. find um that is how I can keep my peace a little bit more my like self right. um but so I just I just use it very mindfully so I think if you use Twitter um oftentimes you just have to use it very mindfully yes and, you know, when something gets a little too much, you just like <laughs> skedaddle for the day. Exactly. <laughs> um, what I was going to say is the one that is kind of like, I feel like this is like the uncle twice removed of the platforms that could be used, but sometimes often it's overlooked is Pinterest. Mm-hmm. And um, well, I just want to, I'm curious to see what your experience with Pinterest is and what you think about it. Yeah, so I've had a Pinterest since I was in like mid high school <clears throat> because I'm just a very aesthetic and visual person. So like you were talking about mood boards, I love a mood board mm-hmm. <clears throat> because obviously you can tell from my Instagram, I love an aesthetic mm-hmm. and like all matching aesthetic. So I originally had a personal Pinterest account and I changed it to a business Pinterest account on the advice of someone at a writer's conference who was saying, you know, you can do paid ads on Pinterest and that sort of thing. And they were like, you don't even have to do that. It's just that the Pinterest business analytics are really good. And that is true. They do give you a lot of info for, you know, not paying anything and just pinning like regular people. They, they give you a lot of sort of like stats and that kind of thing of people who visited your page and whatever. So I have in the past tried doing things like making some of my Instagram photos into pins. They're not really the right size. So I think, so I kind of stopped doing that. So, cause I think if I was going to make pins, I would need to like curate an image here, make the Instagram image fit the Pinterest size. Uh, and so that's something that I might. Then wouldn't it look weird in the feed or in the post? Wouldn't it look like a little skewed or something or no? Yeah, I think I would have to just take the photo a different way or <sighs> Okay. do something to it. I, I've seen people do it. I'm just not totally sure how they do change their photos into wow. pins. So that's something I would like to do because I think it's something that does work for some people because who put their bookstagram photos and their book reviews and that kind of thing on Pinterest. I, what I mainly use it for is I have secret mood, whole Pinterest mood boards for each of my books. And what I've seen authors, and they're like locked, so only I can see them. But something I've seen authors do before is when they are working up to the book release is they release the board for that book to sort of like get people excited about it. I know a lot of authors who do that. And so that's something I sort of hoped I would be able to do one day. And so that's why I keep and grow all of the locked Pinterest boards. The biggest use of Pinterest for me is inspiration. That's what I use to make my sort of like Instagram image mood boards. It's where I go when I'm trying to, you know, find a certain actor who looks like a character or to find a photo of a place mm-hmm. that I, so that I can describe what it looks like or feels like or whatever, um, especially places that I've never been or when I'm trying to build a fantasy world. It's a huge source of inspiration for me. So mm-hmm. I definitely love it. 
I love the idea about the place because I've done it with uh, character features for sure. Yeah. I look for characters that, or I should say models or actors or whatever, people who look like what I have in mind, but it like make, crystallizes it, makes it yes. really clear. And then I can kind of extrapolate from there the descriptions. But um, I like the place idea as well. I haven't done that for places. That's really... Yeah, I'm not great. Even if I've been to a place, I'm not great at description, describing it if I don't have a picture of it right in front of me. But mm -hmm. then if I have a picture of it, I'm like, oh, there's all these sensory details I didn't even think about mm -hmm. that are definitely present here. And mm -hmm. so I do like to have those. those right. Ideas. That's a great idea. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take that idea too. Yeah. Uh, no, that People also do a lot of cool fantasy art on Pinterest. So if I'm trying to build a city or a world or something, it can give me a lot of ideas. You know, what I've done, I've done. I have noticed that there's a lot of really cool, random, yeah, worlds. It's not just real world based, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I I do love Pinterest. I use Pinterest a lot, but for like myself, just mm -hmm. because Same I think, mostly for myself. Yeah, I, I but it is not a business account. Maybe I should, I don't know, figure that out. Although I might have. I don't know. There was a time where I uh, ca cast a wide net of social media and um, there's passwords that I certainly don't remember. So I don't yes. know what I have anymore. <laughs> I have to go searching, but I might actually have like a business business um, account, but I definitely use Pinterest for myself quite a bit. It's just not um, That's great. Yeah. 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 Um, are there any other platforms that you would recommend uh, that we hadn't mentioned? I think the platform that you use really depends on what genre you're writing for and like what age group. So I don't really utilize Facebook. My Instagram just posts automatically to my Facebook business page and I get almost no engagement there. But I just want to like have the visible presence on there in case someone looks for me on there. I don't want to like not exist, uh -huh. you know, but I don't really use it. But if you're writing children's books, especially or anything that's really geared towards like middle-aged women, Mm -hmm. um Facebook I know is really useful for people who write more in those genres mm -hmm. for YA and uh romance and that sort of thing Instagram is much bigger Instagram and TikTok but I do think Facebook can be useful for some people their algorithm is also really rough mm -hmm. okay. that's a really um that's I always forget Facebook only because I've stopped using it really I mean I still have it it's there yeah. because I created it in college but um but I feel like I don't yeah, right. use it too much anymore so I right. always forget that Facebook even exists even though it's giant um yes um and you know no offense to people who use Facebook a lot I just personally don't so um Yes, you're right. That uh, that's a great one. And there's also groups. There's a lot of writing groups on Facebook. Yeah. So Facebook is like going towards the model of groups being the most important thing. So that is pretty much the only thing that I do use Facebook for right now is that you can find groups for almost anything. And a lot of authors will use groups, private groups for like their street team and that kind of thing. Um, and then like fan groups. Mm -hmm. And that sort of thing. A lot of podcasts and authors have secret or private fan groups. So people feel like they're part of something special mm -hmm. and that's something that people love. So that's pretty much the only thing I use Facebook for now is that I'm in like several groups that I really enjoy. Mm -hmm. um, so I do tell people it is useful to use that way. I actually, there was a time a few years back, uh, there was a time when I joined a few fantasy writing groups and it was a beta reading uh, mm -hmm. experience and so we got to beta read for each other so it was actually really useful at that time yeah um, so that's another you know somebody if a writer's looking for beta readers that's another yeah that's a great way to find them yeah um actually you know I had a idea about a platform that is I actually haven't seen being a harness for writing but maybe you have you know something clubhouse have you ever used that app I don't think I've ever heard of that Oh, okay. So Clubhouse is, and now Twitter, if, have you noticed Twitter started doing this thing where it's like um, the talking rooms, like somebody starts like an actual conversation? No, I'm not. I'm not on Twitter. Right okay. Now. So there's this, so that came from, you know how like IG is now doing reels to compete with TikTok? Right. Twitter is now doing these conversations to compete with Clubhouse. Cause like at the beginning, I would say it was like 
mid pandemic is when it got really big. Um, and I think it got big because people are stuck at home and they need, right. you know, to cultivate, they need some kind of right. socialization. And so right. um, what it is, is it's kind of like a chat room, but it's all with uh, just audio. So you oh, join, you create a platform, you create a profile, and then you can follow different subjects. Obviously, there could be literally subjects on, you know, tailoring and herb growing. And uh, that's so interesting. It, there could be subjects on anything. Um, and then it, and then you can join groups. Like anybody can start. Like you can start a group a conversation mm -hmm. about how to grow lavender, and you could right. literally get people in there who are interested in growing lavender or. Uh, who grow lavender themselves and so I was wondering if I don't think because I did join it for a little while I was scrolling through a lot of the groups um, I haven't seen any writing uh, groups on there it was a lot of it was business related I think entrepreneurs went on there right a lot um, I feel like you could use that for writing though. you could you could it's a very interesting concept so I actually yeah, I haven't, but I was just curious to see if you have seen um, any of that happening. I think it was really big and then it kind of like fizzled out and probably because Twitter uh, started doing started the conversations. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's another interesting, the conversations on Twitter. I wonder if there could be any potentials for like online quasi writer conference type things where you could like listen to platform. Oh yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, because you could have like a, you have like a virtual platform where there's people that are the same right. and everyone else is just listening. That's so, so interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It's another, another fun, I guess, fun one. Could be fun. Could also be toxic. You know, right. rooms could get like pretty nasty. It's like a Twitter version, but audio. It was so there. there was so room that I was like, OMG, I can't believe they're discussing this. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's another one. But do you have any overall advice? Because I know it could be incredibly overwhelming. And we talked about a lot of platforms and a lot of these rules and ideas. Do you have any advice for newbies who are writers who want to start somewhere yeah. with social media? Well, I always tell people, like I said, it's good to have a presence on everything as in like you exist on all of the main ones because someone will always look for you on the one that you're not on. But I would really only like dig into one or two. So right now I'm doing Instagram and TikTok because you just can't, like you just can't give the time and energy to every single thing all the time. So I, I think a lot of times people are like, oh my gosh, I have to do all the social medias. And I'm like, just do one or two, whichever ones you like, you know, whichever ones you can connect with people on. And then just start with small steps, you know, follow people who, do what you like and learn from what they're doing. That's the entire way that I learned how to do TikTok was just follow people who talk about books and do basically exactly the same thing that they're doing and then switch it up a little bit for my niche or what works for me <clears throat> and then just sort of figure it out. So, and I would definitely say, figure out what your brand is, is the first step. And that's really, I think, scary to authors, but as an author, your brand is you because you're not selling one single book. Hopefully you're going to write more than one single book. You're selling yourself as an author. Like I said, people want to know you. They want to get to experience, you know, pieces of your life. They want to know things about you. I don't share everything about my life on my business accounts. It's very curated what I want people to see or what I want people to know about me. There are other parts of me that I wouldn't share on social media or I would only share on like my personal accounts for my family. But you have to figure out what sides of yourself you want people to see, what sides of yourself you want to be part of your brand or your presence. And then just sort of be yourself because people really like that. People don't like feeling like they're being sold at all the time. People will buy things from you. They'll, they'll be happy to put up with you know, a few promo posts a month or a week or whatever, if they like you as a person, if it's not just like buy my thing all the time, you know? And so that's why I usually say you should do a third, just personal content questions, whatever, to get engagement going, a third selling if you have a book that's out and a third supporting other people. 
because if you want people to support you, then you got to support them. So basically all you're doing is finding a community of people who like the same things that you do. And that doesn't seem as scary, but people a lot of times don't think about it that way. But I've made a lot of good friends through Instagram who I've never once met in real life uh-huh. who live in a totally different state than me, like California or something. And I live in Kentucky, you know, so it, it's great that way. And you can reach more people than you would ever reach just by word of mouth or in regular everyday life. So it's a really powerful tool for authors. And I think a lot of times people see it as something bad or something scary rather than something that's really powerful and great and can foster relationships. Obviously, you don't want your relationships to be only online. You want to have a good balance of being online and actually being out in your life living. But you do want to have the balance of both because you can create a bigger community that way. So yeah, I would just tell people, you know, spend some time figuring out what your brand is, Mm -hmm. write about it, think about it, that sort of thing. And then just sort of go into it with a plan to your one or two platforms, Mm -hmm. figure out what your posting schedule is going to be and whatever, and then just do one thing at a time. I love what you said about, well, first of all, do one thing at a time is great advice for anything, not to overwhelm yeah. yourself, but I love what you said about doing a third of supporting other uh, writers, you know, or supporting other people. Mm-hmm. I think that that is incredibly powerful because you get people on your team. I mean, obviously it need, does need to be t- genuine. I think people mm-hmm. feel when you're being a hypocrite and you're just like doing it just to get some yeah. attention. But that, um, um, you know, support is very important because that's what makes the experience authentic and gets you like legitimate connections with people instead of just right. a superficial experience. Um, so I think that was great. And I actually had um, a thought, ah, gosh, ah, I, I like <laughs> flew away about... Um, you were saying, oh, I don't know. It might come back. It might not. Probably won't. <laughs> um, I understand. Yeah, I totally understand. like a lot. You know, as you're speaking, ideas, yeah. are and I'm like, ah. um. All right. Well, that my gosh, that was like the best social media one-on-one conversation. It was really. I feel like yeah. I was just rambling. No, no, it's great because it was so. It was actually incredibly. Um, it wasn't just general where it's like this is a hashtag. Okay, right. You know what that is. Most people know at this. Point. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it was. It was um, very good in terms of specifics and actual advice that pe- that's tangible that people could follow. Um, so thank you, thank you, thank you so You're much. Um, and I will put your information, first of all, your beautiful Instagram and um, TikTok, and then um, the links to your company where people can, you know, yeah. if they are interested in something that's more personalized and like actual individual one-on-one help that I encourage yes. everybody who needs that to contact you. <laughs> Absolutely. We love doing that um well thank you so much for coming on today and everybody again I always forget to say this in the beginning but please like this video and uh, yes. share it and all that jazz um follow like maybe comment that'd be great. yeah <laughs> I love um, being on here thank you so much yeah absolutely and we'll see you guys next time in a soon coming video Bye-bye. yes